around the, the issue of uh, mitigation of climate change. I'm speaking to Stephen Siaka. He's the head of public sector Africa at Absa Bank and Bryce McCall. He's from the SA Tide program. It's basically um, an, in, an initiative that looks at how South Africa can mitigate a climate change. Okay, gentlemen, let's get back into it. Uh, Bryce, we've had the problem of load shedding and uh, we've been told that this has been in part, you know, due to a lack of maintenance, um, the average power plant in South Africa is old, the CEO said about 37 years old and so on. But in your findings, I see that you're talking about uh, a need to consider retrofitting some of these power plants with technology that will enable them uh, to be compliant with um, emission standards. Uh, Just tell us about that and also what are the cost implications of that? Is it better to do that rather than build a, a, a plant from scratch? Uh, thank you. Yes. Uh, so we, what we've done is we've anal- uh, done an analysis uh, around whether it's better or not to retrofit these stations. Um, but the, the laws require them to, to stop operating if they're not compliant. Um, so you either pay the cost and then run the plant um, or you, sh- you bring it offline. And our analysis has showed that some, it is feasible, it's, it's better for some stations to be to be brought offline and r- rather than be retrofitted. Mm-hmm. But there's also, like a, there's also a trade-off um, between the horizon uh, um, uh, in, in, the next <coughs> in the next 10 years, um, there's a trade-off between whether you bring those offline um, and how fast, you can, how fast you can grow new capacity. So again, like I pointed out earlier, there's, there's the, const- the, the how fast we can roll out uh, renewables is a big question. And how fast, again, how fast we can um, uh, roll out storage and, and backup um, uh, generators for those renewables yes. is the big question. Right? So there's, a, there's an interplay between there. But essentially we're saying is that it is feasible to retrofit a, a, a number of stations for those standards rather than to build a whole new power station. And is that an area that you think banks would be quite willing to finance? Yeah, the storage part is a big, it's a big part. So if you look at South Africa's demand for electricity, it picks up at 6 a.m. and then sort of comes down. So 29,000 megawatts comes down. The, the issue with renewables, and I, we do buy the debate that we should not um, accelerate renewables uh, speedily because of what they do to ESCOM unless we separate that en- uh, entirely, is that when you need this energy in the evening around 6 p.m., 7 p.m., um, in some instances, uh, you need storage by then because there's no sun, and sometimes you have to pray uh, that the wind blows at the right speed at, uh, <coughs> at, at the right time. So storage is a, it's a, it's a big part that we are looking into and looking into financing into mm. that space. It's a, it's a huge opportunity going forward. Bryce, in the interim, while the storage technology or capacity is not really there at the moment, what do we do? Because at the end of the day, we are a heavily endowed coal country, um, and you need reliable base load um, and sun and wind are not always reliable as uh, my you know uh, uh, Stephen has just alluded you know that at the end of the day um, the wind may not be blowing at the pace that we'd want it to Um, that's a good question the well we have in theory we have a lot of capacity of coal at the moment now we've seen that uh, load shedding has been a result because those power stations haven't been maintained properly over the last uh, few years Mm -hmm. and they're breaking down a lot more frequently Um, but in essence, we have a lot of capacity if we invest a bit of money to get those back into uh, a higher availability, um, as well as bringing online, uh, bringing ahead uh, some IPPs that can br- add to the generation capacity. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that'll assist in the situation. Well, our, a lot of our results are showing that coal is just too expensive to supply to power stations in terms of new capacity. Um, underlying all of our analysis is, is, is saying that coal in South Africa for power stations is just too expensive mm-hmm. now. And that's a, largely a result of, of contracts, uh, short-term contracts to those power stations, uh, which involve a lot of extra costs around transport. But in the interim, it's important that we get IPPs on board and talking uh, with government uh, to supply that added capacity. And the, on the question of storage, we, we're expecting that um, the, the, the markets are going to develop very quickly over mm-hmm. that, even in South Africa.
Stephen, let, let me end with you because we're running out of time. But the issue of um, state-owned enterprises, specifically ESCOM, because we're talking about energy, what's the situation and the appetite around refinancing of those and uh, you know restructuring debt and all of that, especially because they are in such a dire situation? And when we think of the kind of quantums we're talking about, 420 billion rand debt, can they actually ever recover? Because there's no way South Africans can sort them out through tariffs. Yeah. So Pagamani was, was here talking about the challenges of ESCOM. I think there are four or five. So it's, it's a cost of coal, cost of employees, uh, the tariffs discussions and the NASA, what they get there. What, so this thing needs a collective leadership. One of them is municipal debt. So if you look at uh, Soweto owes ESCOM 17 billion, 17 billion. And nationally, all the municipalities also owes ESCOM 17 billion. So if, if that amount is paid uh, today, ESCOM is liquid. Mm. Uh, and so that's why we need all the municipalities, Kokta, Salga, to come together and say collectively, how do we solve the challenge of um, ESCOM li liquidity? Uh, so far, as you know, they are trying to break ESCOM into, into three, bring some efficiencies around there, and government has committed some equity into, into, into ESCOM. But it's a, it's a huge challenge financially, but we are still supportive. All right. So we're going to leave it there, gentlemen. Thank you very much for your time. That was Stephen Siaka. He's the head of Public Sector Africa at ABSA and Bryce McCall from the SA Tide program. We're going to go for a short break.